there on the table are the facts. That's a Chevrolet automobile after going through its punishing tests, taken apart and exposed down to the last golden nut, ready for the microscopic examination that will benefit every Chevrolet owner in the future. Okay, so in the previous video I said something really weird, like I wasn't going to bother changing out the U-joint trunnion. I don't know why I would say that. But anyway, I looked through my stash of parts for this car, and I did order one. So we're going to put it in. So I will try to get you a good shot of this, getting these clips out to start with. Okay, so I need to get these clips out to get the caps out. So I've rotated it to one side, so I have a gap here. There you can see it. Just take a punch. And the other side is up against the, the cast piece. So that popped it up. Well, there's one clip. Let's do Woo! Projectile. Okay. Now, in the manual, they just say put this in a vise and use a punch. But I prefer the smooth, easy, constant pressure of a, a uh, press. So we're going to do that. Just going to use a couple old sockets here. This press is probably actually 30 years older than the car is. As you can tell, it's not hydraulic, it's manual. It works great. I'll get you in here. For those of you interested, this is a Weaver Press. Um, I believe patented in 19... I can't quite read it. 15, I think. This one is a 28 ton. And this is the ratchet mechanism. Just a handle that turns the wheel for you. And if you need to... If it's under pressure and you need to back it off, just simply turn the tooth around. I don't think that's ever happened before. And it pulls it the other way for you. Okay, I've got it mostly pushed out. I can only go so far with the press because, as you can see, the, the trunnion hits bottoms out here. So we're going to tap it out the rest of the way with a punch. and then we'll just slide around. Okay, now this part isn't absolutely necessary. It's just something that I do um, when I'm dealing with machine parts. 
I'm going to take a brake cylinder home, which is what that is, chucked up in my drill, and I'm going to clean out the bearing, the machine surface. You can do this emery cloth would work. Clean it up with a little sandpaper. This just gives a nice constant pressure and an even even clean 360 degrees around it. And we don't want to do much. We don't want to enlarge that hole. At least not noticeably. A little more brake cleaner on there. Now for the new one. Now this will be rotating in a bath of gear oil inside the, inside the ball. But I don't want to put things together dry, so I just got a little blob of grease here. And it looks like from the factory they had a little grease on there anyway, but I'm going to be sure I do it right. So. Okay, so I'm going to start it in. Like so. And this one will be like this. Be sure to get the lock ring grooves on this style to the inside. And we'll go back to the press. You could also use a vise. Um, in the manual, they're, you know, they were just using a hammer and punch. If you go carefully and make sure you get it straight, That'll work too. I'm doing it wrong. Okay, a half hour later, I finally got it out again. I was telling myself the entire time to put these grooves to the outside. But what did I do? I put them to the inside, which proved very difficult for getting it back apart again. But anyway, I want to put one of these on the bottom cap. I forgot to do that also, so we might as well take care of it now. And that'll be a good stop in the press when I get to where I need to be on the bottom side. So let's go back and start doing this all over again. Okay, now I need to spread these out, back out, up against the pin, the clips, and that I will just do with a punch. Alright, the next thing I want to prepare before we roll under the car will be the gaskets going on the ball here. I'm 
these new ones do have a bevel. This is a square edge here, and they've molded it round there, or shaved it. And this one is straight. I'm going to take, since I had the grease out, I'm going to take that. Uh, the gear oil that will actually be in here would be a good thing too to wet these with. Just get them a little slick. And it's up to you if you want to do this. I just prefer not to put uh, a gasket in there dry, especially around the ball, because we're going to be moving that around a bit. Remember, this is a gasket on a moving part, a pivoting part. So we need to be sure to get it a little bit slick for us. Okay, I'll just seat that down inside the flange. Put her down on there. You can see how that's going to work. Put the gasket in the cap. Put the spacer in, screw it lightly together, and then push it with all your might onto the tube. And go like this, working it around the edge. And have the flange on already. I'm going to slide the, the yoke and the, the yoke with the U joint and the trunnion in it on. And, okay. and I'm just going to kind of roughly match what's going on with the transmission, the angle. So roughly there. And then when I'm uh, Bolting the two together, I will jack up the rear axle and turn it slightly if I need to.
these are riveted on, so I'm just taping over them so I don't have to replace rivets. Okay, I'll be using the Rust-Oleum Professional Semi-Gloss Enamel. And I'm supposed to thin that with 15% acetone. This is a 24 ounce cup. I think I'll go... We'll try 12 ounces. I think I'm gonna dump half that back in. I'm making a mess of this. Okay, so we'll try an ounce of acetone and see what that gets us.
seriously? That is so gross. First thing we're going to do is throw our paper shim in there. Get that back on the ball there. This is what they call a trunnion bearing, and it is directional. You see, there's no. Uh, this bottom side goes against the transmission. Just going to put a little grease on here. Okay, that small cork gasket around the tube has made things pretty stubborn, but I'm not going to complain because that just means it's more resistant to leaking, so I had to do a little prying with a 2x4, as you saw, to get the ball back up here. And I think I'm sitting too high. Got a jack under the drive shaft because it wants to be too far down when it's disconnected. Okay. So we'll see if we can get these to pull this up. Just 
still need to push it farther on. Let's see here. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Okay, I need to apologize. In my zeal to get this done, I completely forgot to show you uh, the theoretical situation if you have no idea where your adjustment needs to be on this collar. Um, I took out a paper shim and I just matched that, put brand new cork gaskets in so I know it's going to be adjusted right. I know the cork's going to seal. Um, but if you have no idea you'll want to bolt this up without the cork gaskets in it and then start with four paper shims between the transmission and the flange and then grab it and try to move it here if it feel if it's nice and snug if you can move it just a little bit but it's nice and snug then you're good to go if it's too loose or too tight you can't move it at all then you want to add shims or remove shims, whatever the case may be. Then once you got it to where you're happy, you will take it back apart, remember how many you have in there, put the cork gaskets in, and then put it all back together again. So where do I go from here? Um, I have brakes to do, electrical to do, I'm going to rebuild electrical harness. I need to finish putting the engine back together. Uh, exhaust. Carburetor rebuild. Um, go through the starter, the generator. All that good stuff. So, thanks for watching this one and please join me for whatever I happen to decide to do next. In this giant test crucible, the answers to many things are found. Answers that mean constant improvement in engine performance, in the development of better pistons, bearings, crankshafts, chassis, brakes. Here, the newest contributions of engineering science to motor and metal are Chevrolet tested under the most trying and exacting conditions.